Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Asab. Um, it has been a while since I've been on here. I feel like it's been forever. So sorry, I should have had a video up last week, but life has gotten crazy. Summer is in full swing and I feel like I'm on a super late summer schedule. By the time I get Alina down, I'm like usually tired myself. <laughs> Um, and yeah, today's video is going to be a girls chat video. I know a lot of you guys like these videos. I love doing these videos. I like to kind of like chat with you guys and hear your feedback once you've watched the video. And I feel like we cover a lot of like grown women topics. So today we have a lot of good topics I've asked. These are like a couple weeks ago I asked um, everyone to ask me questions. And so we're just going to go through a few of them today. Um, and yeah, chat it up. And please do not mind. The crazy blue eyes because i'm not super into crazy contacts as i once was however i got these in the mail from desio they're in the shade darker i believe and i can't take them off because my eyes are irritated i don't know if you guys noticed they're a little red so once i take it off they're still going to start watering for sure and my makeup will be ruined so bear with the look for the video All right so we're about to get into it grab your tea coffee milk whatever i'm drinking uh, of course boba i'm obsessed with bubble tea uh. all right so the next question is a question that i get a lot um especially since i dropped that divorce journey video and i talked a little bit about it there but yeah somebody asked how do you co-parent how do you deal with the stress of it going through this right now all right so i'm sorry that you're going through i'm assuming a separation of some sort it's hard in the beginning i feel like you just want to get a rhythm it can be awkward sometimes for sure i think with co-parenting um the best advice i would say is always act in the child's interest okay i think at times it can be a lot of our ego pettiness jealousy things that are getting in the way of that relationship that co-parent relationship and those things have nothing to do with the kid um and it's honestly it's such a deterrent to a healthy relationship so for me i feel like in the beginning i was for some reason i feel like you just want to keep a semblance of control and i feel like um i wanted to have the control of the relationship with alina i feel like i wanted her to myself i was feeling very possessive of her and i realized that not that i was keeping her away from her dad i would never do that but like i wasn't really pushing more for things just because i felt like i really wanted to keep control like she's my daughter and like it was a lot about ego and possessiveness and not in the best interest of Alina. And I realized not only my like is it not great for her, but it's also not great for me. Because then I have all of the burden, you know, to take care of Alina. And I kind of was on that like independent woman, like I can do it all myself tip. And that, I mean, it's great. It's great. But at the same time, it didn't help me. You know what I mean? It was putting all of the pressure on me to do everything by myself. And so I realized very quickly that, yeah, that doesn't work and it's no reason for it. You know what I mean? I feel like I just wanted to keep control of her versus care for her, if you know what I mean. Like if I'm caring for her, I'm going to do what's in the best interest of her, which is a great relationship with her dad. And I also realized, y'all, like I don't know about your kids, but for my daughter, she is a daddy's girl. It doesn't matter what I do for her. Like, I could wake up every single morning at, like, the crack of dawn and, like, wipe her butt, which I've done in the past. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, but it doesn't matter. Like, she's just a daddy's girl. And um, no amount of anything I can do can change that. I've tried. Trust me. Um, but I'm happy for her. I'm glad there's that relationship with her dad. I'm glad that she loves her dad so much. Um, I would never want to take that away from her. Yeah, and I enjoy my free time. I used to be really sad when Alina would go to her dad's. But now I'm like, see you later, girl. See you tomorrow. Like, I feel like I really utilize that time for myself. I know that I work hard and I deserve to have, you know, that time that I can spend doing things that I want to do that don't include her. And yeah, she'll be right back. I feel like it's great to have a balance. And it takes time, but once you hit that, like, sweet spot, it's like so much easier i feel like i can definitely be a pushover in a lot of ways when it comes to my co-parenting but for me i value peace above anything else like i value my peace above anything so if i have to make some compromises you know and if things maybe are not always as fair as i would like them to be i think i would take that compromise just so i could have a peaceful 
co-parenting relationship and it happens a lot it's working out great and i hope it continues that way my advice would be always put the kid first try to leave your ego and any other emotions that you have that are not you know anything to do with your kids at the door and yeah you just have to work together next question where did you learn to do makeup and at what age so i've been doing my own makeup since i was early 20s i wasn't i didn't do any makeup in high school i was never really that into makeup i feel like when i had alina which is about six years ago now um and i was on my mat leave that's when i really got into makeup and i started to watch youtube videos like i feel like that's the best way to learn anything in this world like cooking makeup home decor like youtube is the greatest source of information like anywhere that's the advice that i would give anybody that's starting out is just to watch tutorials try to copy things there's so many great dupes you don't need to even spend a lot of your money um i get asked all the time how do you get into makeup and that's my advice so somebody asked how do you get the confidence to get back into the game after a breakup um it's hard you guys it's really hard i feel like for me it was like 10 years um that I've not really had to talk to the other um, sex really in any type of romantic way other than my ex-husband so it was hard in the beginning I feel like it's really comfortable when you have friends that can kind of introduce you to people like I think it's scary when it's just like a stranger that you don't know and you're like oh, how do I talk to people I don't know how this goes like that's how I kind of felt like I don't know how things go I feel like I, I felt like things I don't know if it was just my fear, but like people move faster than I'm ex like used to or um, maybe a little too forward for me. And so you just have to move on your own comfort level and take your time. Um, it's scary, especially when you're in like a long term relationship and then you have to go back to like talking to strangers. Alhamdulillah, there's so many like great people out there and you can never really meet them unless you put yourself out there and take risks. And yeah, I think you need to take your time. Don't move on anybody else's schedule, you know, um, if you want to move super, super snail slow, that's your right. When you're new to this, it takes time to get back into the game. Um, but once you do, you realize it's not that hard. Like, it's, it's not that hard. <laughs> once you, mm, I got a couple questions about my clothing line. If you guys don't know, I had a clothing line called Aline. I thought it was great um a lot of people liked it it is coming back i just got my samples in it's been moving very slow because of covid and my manufacturers are having obviously being hit just like any other industry but yeah inshallah later this summer i'm gonna have everything back i have the most beautiful line my my taste has developed so much since i stopped doing it about two years ago i took a hiatus because life but alhamdulillah i'm in the perfect position now to come back even better and yeah if you guys are a fan of Aline it is coming very 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 soon I feel like that was an infomercial <laughs> and so somebody asked um, how do you feel about all the talk of sexual assault in the community so honestly I think all the girls coming out and sharing their stories has been so brave I'm so proud of them all um, I know you hear so much about like false accusations but that's such a small percentage compared to the overwhelming amount of women who have been victimized by these disgusting predators. Um, it's like so shocking. And I swear, like people can have so much evidence and still look for ways to discredit victims. It makes me sick to my stomach, especially me being a girl mom. Like I always think of like, how can I protect Alina? Like how can I raise her so that she's comfortable, you know, sharing things with me that a lot of people kept from their parents um how do i put her in situation how do i keep her from situations that will you know compromise her um and it honestly had me thinking because alhamdulillah i can say in my childhood i had you know i was very protected um at the time i thought my mom was so controlling 
not so controlling but like you know typical somali mom like i would have to tell people like sorry i can't sleep over your house because you have a dad and you have a brother and my mom doesn't let me sleep over places that men live <laughs> like at the time i was like oh my god she's so embarrassing but it was all for the best like i could not even see where men live like my mom would never like me to sleep over anywhere that um was in home she would always tell me to like your friends can come here like so while i was thinking of that like i was thinking of my childhood and how you know i never really had any issues like i've never alhamdulillah been the victim of sexual assault but it did lead me to thinking of some memories of times where i felt intensely unsafe and times where i felt just grossed out um and me just thinking about that just made me think of this one memory that i have that i never have spoken about really to anyone um i don't know why i'm nervous saying it you guys it's not that deep of a story honestly um but basically when i was like 12 or i want to say i was like 12 or 13 years old you guys and at that time i was this little skinniest little girl um i did not look my age because i was so thin and petite i looked like a child i remember i used to even wear those um you know the hijabs that are like one piece the little girl hijab sometimes alina wears it i used to wear that you guys because it was comfy um and i really didn't care about looks or being cool or anything so i used to wear those or i used to wear a backwards turban sometimes um because i didn't i couldn't be bothered to like wrap hijabs anyways so my mom used to hang out at her friend's house and her friend's house was directly behind our townhouse. So it was like, our, I'd have to go through our backyard and then through a little bit of a courtyard and then I would be at my friend's, my mom's friend's building. All right, so I remember uh, we were out of milk. So my mom, I called my mom and she said, come pick up some money for me and go to the convenience store and get milk. So it wasn't that late at night, but it was winter. So, you know, when it like turns dark at like six o'clock. So it was probably like seven or eight o'clock, but it was already like pitch black by then. And so I'm walking through the courtyard and this guy approaches me and he is like, I want to say early 20s, late teens, early 20s, definitely older than me, like full grown man. But and I remember thinking like, he's so handsome, you guys. He was very handsome, very well dressed. He looked really good um but at that age i didn't care about boys like so you can be the cutest thing in the world and i wouldn't give a shit but yeah he stopped me and he was like i remember he said something to me like along the lines of like you're so pretty you're so beautiful and i remember thinking like no i'm not like what are you talking about i look like a kid i am a kid like it just really grossed me out and i remember thinking like wow like i'm not even flattered by this his attention it's really making me uncomfortable because i am a child and I remember thinking that intensely, like, you are a perv. Why do you think a girl that obviously looks like a kid is attractive to you and you're a grown man? And I remember thinking, like, yeah, okay, thanks. Like, and I felt uncomfortable, so I kept walking. And something just told me, you guys, he's behind me. I could feel it, even though I was too scared to look back. Like, something told me, like, he's still behind you, um, even though I walked away from him. And so I just started running because I was afraid. Um... And I don't know, I just got a really bad energy, I got a bad vibe, and I just, something told me to run. So the way that my my um, mom's friend's building was, it's kind of like a semicircle a little bit. And so there's two entrances. So there's one on this side, and there's one like on that side. And so there's one that was closer to me, but I knew that it was locked. But the one that was further from me, so I have to run farther, um, and potentially this creepy guy would catch me. Um... The one that was farther from me, I knew that it was like broken. So like if somebody gets out, it wouldn't close all the way. It would kind of like close and then just sit there on the ledge um, until somebody like pushes it closed. So I took the risk and I this whole time I'm running, you guys, I'm not sure if he's behind me. I'm too scared to look back. Um, but I just, I can kind of hear footsteps, but it's like snow on the floor. So I don't know if it's him. Um, so I'm running across the courtyard, alhamdulillah, like I'm fast you guys, I was skinny and I was fast. So I got to the door and as soon as I got in the door, alhamdulillah I was open you guys, like that's like God acting right there. The door was open and I ran in and I slammed it closed right behind me and this guy was behind me, he was chasing me. And he started like banging on the window and like laughing hysterically, it was the scariest thing you guys, the scariest thing. And I remember running to my mom's house, like my mom's friend's house, and running and like banging on the door. And then as soon as I got there, 
she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing. Like, I didn't want to tell her anything that happened. And even though nothing really happened to me, I was just basically chased by some maniac. I remember feeling like so much shame, like I don't want her to know. And I remember thinking in that moment, you guys, and this is how crazy it is. Like, I remember thinking like, even if that guy would have cashed me and if he would have done something to me, I wouldn't have told anyone. Like that night when I was sleeping and I was thinking, and I haven't told anybody this story, you guys, not my mom, not my sisters, literally nobody. Um, I forgot it. Honestly, I would tell them now, but I honestly forgot the story. At the time though, I didn't want to tell anyone. I thought it was so shameful. Um, I felt like it was my fault because I was talking to him. I shouldn't have even talked to him. Um, and it just gives me a little glimpse. Like, n I know nothing happened to me, guys. It was scary, but it was not that big of a deal. But I remember, like, I feel like it gave me a glimpse of what girls go through. People who have actually been sexually assaulted. Like, the shame, this fear, not wanting to tell people, keeping it to yourself for a long t amount of time. And, like, especially as kids... I was so afraid of like, I don't know, me being in trouble or making a big deal. I'm like, I don't want it to be a big deal. I don't want it to be a thing. That's why I'm going to tell nobody. Um, I don't want him to be caught. I don't want to have to go to court. I don't know if I could even do that. Like, what would they do to him? Like, he's a creep. He chased me, but that was about it. So I kind of just like blocked it out of my memory and I never told anyone. And yeah, it gives me an idea of how it must feel to, you know, be afraid to come forward um, I don't want to make it seem like I'm minimizing people's experience because obviously what had happened to me was not like I was never touched in any way or assaulted but I want to say this just to say like I understand where a lot of these girls are coming from and why you know things may not be on the timeline that makes sense for you because there's so much emotion that goes through your body when you're going through something like this and yeah so that's how i feel about it i'm proud of these girls i think it's amazing that they're coming forward and telling their stories and i think it's about time that these type of things are discussed because every girl that i know has some kind of weird creepy story similar to this or even worse um and it's not right okay so how old are you? I get this question all the time. Somebody actually commented on one of my YouTube videos, like, girl, you've been claiming that you're 29 for 30 years, for three years or something. And I was like, my mom got so mad at that. I told my mom that. She's like, how dare they say that? Are they trying to say that I'm old? Um, but yeah, I'm 30 years old, you guys. 1989, okay, you can ask around, ask my friends and my family. Who lie about, first of all, I was gonna lie about my age. I would not pretend to be 30 years old, okay? I would go for, 23 <laughs> all right all right guys so i don't want this to be a super long video so this will be the last question somebody asked which one okay how about this somebody asked how do you grow your instagram any tips for beginners um i grew my instagram organically i feel like i don't have any like you know tried and true method it's just posting i started off in beauty i feel like at a time where there weren't a lot of hijabi black hijabi beauty influencers um and so naturally when you have like a niche market like that where it's like just you know a certain amount of small amount of people that do what you do you're able to grow fast in the beginning i grew really fast um i feel like over time it kind of tapered off um and now i just i'm not so much about the numbers i used to be obsessed with the numbers obsessed with growing obsessed with the likes but now i feel like i just post what i like um and what i feel like my audience will enjoy as well and i kind of leave the rest up to the algorithm um some days it does great some days it doesn't i don't like to tie my self-worth to it because uh, there was a time where i did and i felt like every picture that didn't you know get that many likes means that you know nobody in the world likes me um but alhamdulillah i've grown past that i think um i would say make sure you kind of pick what you want to do so if it's lifestyle lifestyle is great especially if you're in it for business and branding purposes because you know that means more brands that you're able to work with um or if you can pick a specific niche that you are very um passionate about i feel like that it would be more of an organic way to grow um for example if you're like obsessed with books you can do like i've seen so many people have like a whole page on and advising people on what books to choose or like whatever you're passionate about pick that work hard at it 
The thing about social media, especially in this day and age, is that you'll see someone and they'll be posting consistently and they won't maybe get the numbers right away, but then overnight, you know, they'll have a couple of viral videos or posts and all that hard work that they were putting in, it is brought to fruition. So one thing I'll say to people is never give up, even if it's a side hustle, even if it's something you're doing on the side, you know, um, just be consistent with it. You know, it might take a year, it might take six years, but eventually if you're putting out quality content, it's going to get the attention that it deserves. I really feel like that, especially nowadays with algorithms and everything being so so specific eventually the audience that you're meant to have will find you and so i would say is quality content consistency don't give up those are my three advices if you guys want to have a whole video on that because there's a whole business behind social media that i did not know um and alhamdulillah i feel like i'm now utilizing it well to my advantage and i feel like i have a lot of tips and tricks that i can share with you guys so if there are enough people that actually want to know about this i would definitely do a video on how i make money you know doing this and um it's a really great life so i would love to share it with you guys all right so that's the video i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys learned something about me it was maybe a little bit too intense a little rambly um but overall i like the questions please comment down below let me know your thoughts any comments opinions rebuttals you know anything i would love to hear what you guys have to say i love reading the comments and i read every single comment um and i try to respond back to most comments as well um and yeah make sure to like and subscribe my daughter alina, <laughs> my daughter alina texted me the other day you guys she has an ipad now so she texts me from her ipad and she says to me she goes mommy you don't have a million subscribers um because everyone she watches on youtube like all these kids have millions of subscribers and she was like to me are you sure that you tell them to comment and subscribe <laughs> because she goes you might forget and that's why you don't have a million subscribers <laughs> anyway, she's the cutest my mom too like my mom i feel like i'm supposed to say goodbye you guys but i have a little bit more to say my mom loves youtube she's on youtube all day she watches all the big small influencers on youtube and she always talks to me like well, you don't have the i sub you don't have the the silver box that everyone gets like i don't know if this is like gonna be like for you like if you don't have that yet i don't know if you're ever gonna get <laughs> and i'm like i tell her about my instagram because i have more followers on instagram but she thinks it's like facebook she thinks it's some place that i made up to be honest um and so i don't i feel like i will not be accomplished to my mom unless i have that silver play button as regardless i'm thankful that i'm almost at 20,000 subscribers um i can't believe it i'm so happy about that because i'm not gonna stop until i get 100,000 and i can just rub it in their faces um anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video i love you guys a lot i'll see you guys in my next video very shortly all right bye kisses good night <laughs>